Welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about getting the best practice tone. So before we begin this conversation, we're going to have to answer the question on what is our goal as we're sitting down to practice. Because depending on what our goal is, the sound that we have dialed up is going to change. Now, I've always heard that you should practice with a clean, really dry tone because it's revealing. And although that is very true, it is very revealing, it's really hard to play with a really sterile tone. And I always encourage my students to not do that. You need to get used to practicing with a little drive, with a little compression. The things, the sounds that you like, I would dial those things up. Now, you can easily get a really muddy tone as you're trying to practice technique or practice chord voicings, and that would get in the way of that. So to answer that question, what is the best tone for practicing? Let's decide what our goal is. So the first goal that we want to tackle is the goal of technique. If you're sitting down to practice technique, so right hand picking technique, your left hand scales working with a metronome or dynamics, that would all fall under the technique category. And my suggestion for dialing up a tone while you're practicing technique is get a comfortable tone. So for me, that means a little bit of compression, a little bit of drive, and then I would keep it drier than wet. So dial back any delays, maybe a little bit of reverb. Again, I find it really difficult to play without reverb. And so I'll have just a little bit of reverb dialed in and then a somewhat hairy tone. Okay, there's just a really short tail on the reverb and I would say that's maybe even too much gain. So I'm gonna dial back the gain and there's plenty of attack there, especially on the bridge pickup. I would also encourage maybe a brighter sound. Again, just to hear that articulation as you're working with a metronome. It's still really comfortable. It kind of is chewy feeling. But I might sit down for 30 minutes and just work on uh, some version of a scale and as I'm doing that I want something that's easy to play so I'm not fighting the sound of the guitar as well as playing it. Plenty of articulation there, and it's something that I'm comfortable playing, but the sound is not impeding my ability to kind of track my progress and really hone in and pay attention to technique. The second possible goal as you're sitting down to practice may be writing. And this is a whole different approach. If we're looking at sitting down to write something, whether it's a solo or a guitar part or even just a chord structure for a song, I would say it really depends on what are you trying to write. I would mess with the sounds that you have, maybe use a pedal uh, that you always use in the same setting and change the settings. Do something different something that can cause some inspiration. Um, and so I would dial up a fun sound, uh, but maybe something that is still pretty workable. So maybe not anything that has a really specific harmony attached to it from an octave pedal. Um, maybe not something that's got a very rhythmic uh, delay or something like that. So I might dial up something like a Qtron and I might use my compressor, and a couple boosts here. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, and I just instinctively started playing in C. My mouth always wants to do the the wah wah sound while you're while I'm playing a cutron or a wah pedal, uh, but that might be something that I just instinctively started playing in C and it made me want to play a groove. And this is really using the pedal. I'm playing the pedal as the instrument, and this is just a sound source uh, from the guitar in this case because I'm sitting down to try to write something. <laughs> All right, the third possible goal that you may have is you might be working on a specific song uh, with some sheet music or some tab or a specific solo. So I've switched guitars to a much more uh, shreddy 80s guitar. It's got a much flatter radius and a wider neck uh, because I'm doing something really uncomfortable and learning some Dimebag Daryl. And so if you're learning a specific song, the main thing that I would suggest is dial up you know, the tone uh, that is that song. Uh, I find that it's much easier to kind of get in the zone and try to, to learn something when you have this, a similar sound at least. Um, but the one thing I would encourage you to do is get that tone and then just dial the gain back. Always, always, always use less gain than you think. Um, and I do think it would be beneficial. Uh, you'll be able to hear more articulation um, and you'll be able to kind of target some specific areas that you may need some more work. So this is not necessarily a Dimebag Daryl tone. Okay, but it is in that shreddy area, but it's a lot of gain right there. So I might take that gain dial it down some, brighten it up a bit, okay? Okay, and it's just a little more articulate when you dial the game back. All right, so the fourth goal that we're gonna be accomplishing the tone for is just if you're sitting down and you just want to play through your gear I think it's important uh, to really push the boundaries of the gear that you own um, and it's kind of a healthy way uh, to avoid obsessing too much over all the new gear that is constantly being thrown at us it's all awesome but also you know I would encourage you to spend some time with the gear that you have instead of just you know, buying a pedal and dialing it to the one sound that you saw on a YouTube uh, tutorial and then you decide that you don't like it without really experimenting, changing the tones, you know, and, and dialing in sound. So I have just a fun, really gained up and delayed sound here. <laughs> So this is just a fun sound that I have dialed up and it's not how I would dial these pedals. I have my compressor higher, I have the Klon really gained up, um, and then the amp, you know, in, in more of a low mid focused uh, gain. And this is not normally how I would run my board. I have no reverb on, but I do have some delay, uh, which is kind of opposite of what I normally uh, do there. But it is a really fun way uh, to just sit there and practice your guitar. And there's not necessarily an achievable goal in mind, but just to sit down every day and put your hands on the strings, um, I think is an important part of being a growing guitarist, um, especially if you're doing this for a living. Um, you know, we've been in a lull for a long time now, and so a lot of us are out of practice. And so kind of getting gig ready 
is going to be a valuable thing right now. So here's our fifth and final goal uh, that you may have while you're sitting down to practice, and that is working through some music theory and specifically like chord voicings. I would encourage you to pick up an acoustic guitar, play your guitar unplugged, and focus way less on what's happening with the amp and the pedals and way more on what you're hearing with your ears. Um, and so I find acoustic instruments. Um, you know, they just sound the way that they sound, uh, whether it's an electric guitar unplugged or an acoustic guitar or um, like this 30s Gibson archtop. This is my favorite guitar to write with um, just because it's so honky and mid focus that you can hear really everything kind of right in, in the front of your face because um, it's got a really kind of like a nose on the notes. <laughs> But especially when you're doing some more jazzy Okay, so when you're doing some more jazz chords and, and playing around with chord voicings, um, something that's just going to reveal every note really evenly is the most important thing, but also having something that you don't have to plug in, you don't have to turn anything on, you don't have to wait for anything to warm up. Uh, you can just grab it and start going. Um, that's a really important, valuable thing to have just at the ready um, so that you're not having to open up cases and do all this work just to begin to play the guitar. <laughs> Thanks for checking out today's video. I think the biggest thing that we learned today is that really you need to decide on what is your goal when you sit down to practice. And I would highly encourage you to have decided that way ahead of time. So maybe on Monday and Wednesdays, you're just playing around with pedals, but on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're working on technique and you're working on some music theory, some chord voicings. And that way you can already kind of mentally prepare and you can have your board already set up or you can have your guitar sitting out on a stand so that you can easily grab it and not have to do a bunch of work before you're starting to put your hands on the guitar and really work on what you're trying to achieve. And the other thing is like I said before, a lot of us haven't played a gig in over a year. And as we start to get booked and get hired, we really need to shake the dust off and so this is something that's gonna help you and help myself for sure, is get in gig ready shape by constantly every day having an accomplishable goal, working on brushing off the dust and really getting re-familiarized with writing uh, and doing some session work for me, but also just with my pedals. I haven't set up programs for a specific artist in a year you know, in my presets on my big board. And so things like that are things to easily forget about. Uh, but if you have accomplishable goals every day where you're sitting down, putting your hands on the guitar and refamiliarizing yourself, I think is a good way to start getting gig ready. Hopefully today's video helped you think about what sound you're dialing up as you're practicing. And hopefully it encouraged you to start thinking about some accomplishable goals that are predetermined before you even pick up the guitar. Um, Please like and subscribe this video and ring that bell. That'll let you know when I go live and when new videos come out. Uh, visit my website, conlittlejohn.com. I'm going to have some practice tracks available soon, and I'm excited about that. Uh, for now, I've been Colin, and uh, we'll see you next time. What you're trying to accomplish. Ugh. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go or on your amp, okay. We're just trying um, our first, mm, hopefully today. So to help us find uh, the best practice tone. <laughs> You might.
might want to lean ugh, on one of five options of <laughs> So to help us, uh, yeah, the mix down, all right, so The third So to help me <laughs> 